I'd like to think Jesus died here. I would, I really would. That's, that's pretty impressive that this little village in the middle of nowhere has been recognized by Israel. Oh, this might piss a few people off. So Christmas is almost upon us once more and soon a chunk of the world's population will be gathered around unwrapping various unwanted socks and jumpers whilst of course celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. So what better time to re-examine the story of Jesus, albeit from a rather different angle. A while back a friend told me of a town hidden away in the mountains of North Japan where the locals genuinely believed Jesus lived and died. Now the idea that Jesus came to Japan is a little bit difficult to believe, let alone that he lived and died in this rural town in the north. So naturally I thought my friend was making fun of me and I told him to get out of my kitchen. But then a few days later I came across some photos of the town featuring the tomb of Christ, something that resembled a church, and a photo of the local townsfolk dancing around a cross. And then I felt very, very confused. The town in question is called Shingo and it's about three hours north of Tokyo by bullet train in the region of Aomori. And having seen these photos and heard this bizarre story, I figured we're going to have to go up there and see for ourselves and try and work out what the hell's going on. I won't lie, we've got quite a few questions that need answering here. Number one, why did Jesus come to Japan? Number two, how did he get to Japan? I mean, that's not, it's quite far, isn't it? Uh, and number three, how did he get away, how did he escape the whole crucifixion thing? So, let's go to Shingor and let's go and find the tomb of Jesus Christ and find out what really happened 2,000 years ago. So, uh, we're near the town of Shingor now in Aomori. To call this place isolated would not be an understatement, it's pretty remote. To be able to live out here in the winter months when there's absolutely tons of snow, to be honest, you'd need to believe in Jesus Christ to get through it. But what actual evidence is there that this is real? Well, apparently, uh, they've got this um, summer festival every year, um, and they dance to this song. And the lyrics of this song has got this um, strange language that is not Japanese. Okay. And, uh, and well, it is, some people say that it's based on Hebrew. It's pretty random. <laughs> yes, I know. So that, that, that is why there are some things that, that make them believe that it's true. And we need to check it out. The first thing you'll see before reaching the town is this sign. And seeing it for the first time out here in the middle of nowhere is an utter mindfuck. That is pretty surreal. There's just a sign there in the middle of this, in the middle of nowhere, just saying Tomb of Christ. <sighs> oh my God. So we're at the village and uh, there's a big map welcoming us here. Uh, it says home of historical romance and Jesus Christ. I like the way that's the, the historical romance is more significant than Jesus Christ. They put that first. Uh, and there's a map. Apparently the, the, burial, the burial mound of Jesus Christ is up on that hill over there. Uh, and there's quite a few strange and intriguing things around here. Number one, tomb of Christ. But number four, skunk cabbage group birthplace. I don't know what that is, but that sounds equally as exciting. Uh, but I guess let's, uh, let's go up the hill and have a look. Christ's grave. So this is the story of uh, what actually happened, presumably. The real story of what happened to Jesus Christ. It says, when Jesus Christ was 21 years old, he came to Japan and pursued knowledge of divinity for 12 years. It doesn't really talk about how, how he got here, we just assume it wasn't too difficult. He then went back to Judea, aged 33, and engaged in his mission. He was here 12 years. Yeah, so right. right. Yeah. However, at that time, people in Judea would not accept Christ's preaching. Instead, they arrested him and tried to crucify him on a cross. His younger brother, Iskudi, casually took Christ's place and ended his life on the cross. So his younger brother, who you may or may not know about, Iskidi, casually took Christ's place <laughs> on the cross. Casually nailed. Like, all right, casually, I'll take care of it. <laughs> I'll do it, no problem, Jesus. I'll get nailed to a cross. And then Christ, who escaped the crucifixion, went through the ups and downs of travel and again came to Japan. The ups and downs of travel. Only 8,000 miles. It doesn't, I like the way it's, when, he, when he returned, there were ups and downs. But when he came here, when he was 21, no problem at all. Simple. But uh, yeah, he came back and then he settled right here in what is now called Herai Village and died at the age of one, 106. 
as Jesus, I suppose he could. The above description was given in a testament by Jesus Christ himself. There you go. It's the real story of what happened. Uh, I can see the cross up there. Let's go and have a look. Mount, the burial mount of Jesus Christ, died age 106 after the ups and downs of a long journey from Jerusalem to Japan. There's a little rock here and it says Arigato gozaimasu, thank you very much. Presumably thanking him for coming and living here and moving here, you know, like he, like he did. Um, Although really he didn't sacrifice anything then, did he? No, I didn't. His brother. I didn't just think his brother, of didn't he? His brother well, his casually, brother took, his casually took his place. His yeah. brother casually took the place on the on the cross. What did I, Jesus do? Surely sure. this story is flawed because it makes him look like a coward. I don't want to get nailed to a cross. Fuck it, I'm going to Japan. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's basically what happened. That was pretty casual. And then he lived to 106. <laughs> I'm, and then here, and I'm not making this up. There's a stone dedicated by the ambassador to Israel, uh, Eli Cohen. In 2004, it says here, the stone on the right was dedicated by the municipality of Jerusalem as a testimony of friendship between the town of Shingor and the city of Jerusalem and the state of Israel, June 6th, 2004. And then there's some Hebrew that I cannot read. If anybody watching this knows Hebrew, please translate that for us. Uh, but I mean, that, that's, that's pretty impressive that this little village in the middle of nowhere has been recognized by Israel. And what we've got behind you. And then over here we've got uh, the mound of Iskiri, Jesus' younger brother, who of course made the ultimate sacrifice casually uh, by getting nailed to a cross. But what I find both disturbing and upsetting is uh, whilst Jesus has a little thank you saying Arigato gozaimasu beneath his <laughs> cross, <laughs> Iskiri who got nailed to a fucking cross, got nothing. There's no thank you for him. What's going on? It's this sort of story it just doesn't make sense. It's true that Jesus may have died here, but it's slightly more likely that the tombs actually hold the bodies of 16th century missionaries. During the 1500s, Christian evangelists were common throughout Japan until 1614 when Christianity was banned by the Shogun, and those who refused to denounce their beliefs were tortured, beheaded, or burned at the stake to set an example. This led to Christianity going underground in Japan for more than 200 years, with the religion surviving only in scattered communities throughout the country until the Meiji Restoration, when freedom of religion was allowed once again. And today, around 1% of Japan's population still identifies as Christian. But given Shingo's isolation, this may explain why the town has held this connection with Christianity after hundreds of years. I'd like to think Jesus died here. I would, I really would, <laughs> because uh just out here in the middle of the rural mountains of Japan. Something quite romantic about it. Well, not all of our questions were answered, but uh, I definitely think there was still some valuable lessons to be learned from this trip. For example, uh, I learned that when the shit hits the fan, get the fuck out of there quick and let one of your siblings get nailed to a cross instead. I mean, that... That was pretty good advice. But what do you make of it all? Let us know in the comments section below. I've also put an article in the description box with more details as well as directions on how to get there if you're thinking of making a pilgrimage yourself. I still feel we didn't really get an answer on how Jesus actually got to Japan, but there's that line that I can't get out of my head, that line about Jesus going through the ups and downs of travel. Because in that one line, you can almost picture that epic journey, that epic quest that Jesus would have endured on his return trip to Japan.